A bloody deed. Almost as bad, good mother, as kill a king and marry with his brother. My lady, t'was my word. Wretched, rash, intruding fool. Farewell. I took thee for thy better. Leave the wringing of your hands. Please sit you down and let me wring your heart. I saw I shall have been made a penetrable stuff. Oh, my God, thou dare swag thy tongue and voice of room against me. Such an act that blurs the grace and blush of modesty calls virtue a hypocrite. Takes off the rose from the fair forehead of an innocent love and sets a blister there. Makes marriage vows as false as Dyson's own. I mean, what act the roar so loud thunders in the index? And look here on this picture and on this, the counterfeit presentment of two brothers. See what a grace was seated on this brow? A, a combination in a form indeed where every god did seem to set his seal to give the world assurance of a man. This was your husband. Look you now what follows. Here is your husband, like a mildewed ear, blasting his wholesome brother. Have you eyes? You cannot call it love, for at your age the heyday and the blood is tamed. It's humble and waits upon the judgment. And what judgment would step from this to this? Eyes without feeling, feeling without sight, ears without hands, or eyes smelling signs, all are but a sickly part of one true sense could not so mold. Oh, shit, where is thy blood? <laughs> Speak to me no more. Turns my eyes into my very soul. Nay, but to live in the ruined sweat of an insane bed, stewed in corruption, honeying and making love over a nest. Oh, no, no, I turn into a. It sounds like dagger, a murderer, and a villain. A slave that is not a twentieth part of the tide of the oppressed and for A vice of kings, a cut purse of the empire and rule that from his shelf the precious diamond stole and put it in his pocket. No more! A king of shreds and patches! Oh, save me! And help her arm me with your wings, you heavenly guards! Do not forget! His visitation is my sweat, I almost planted purpose. But look, amazement on thy mother sits, conceived in weakest body, strongest words. Speak to her, Hamlet. Comes with you, lady. Alas, who is with you that you do bend your eye on vacancy and with your incorporeal air to hold discourse? Whereon do you look? On him. On him. Look you how palely he goes. Do not look upon me! Don't you speak then? Do you see nothing there? Nothing at all. All that is, I see. Look, you know how it steals away! My father in his habit as he lived! This is the very coinage of your brain. This bodiless creation ecstasy is very cunning in! Ecstasy? My pulse as yours doth temporarily keep time and makes us helpful music. It is not madness that I utter, not that for love of grace. May not that mattering unction to your soul, that not your trespass, but my madness speaks. Confess yourself to heaven. Repent what's past, avoid what is to come, and do not spread the compost on the weeds to make them rancor. Oh, what that was cleft my heart in twain. I'll throw away the worser part of it and live the purer with the other half. Good night. But go not to my uncle's bed. Assume a virtue if you have it not. And when you are desirous to be, and when you are desirous to be blessed, our blessing beg of you. For this same Lord, I do repent. But heaven hath pleased it so to punish me with this. 
and this with me. I must be cruel only to be kind. Thus bad begins, and worse remains behind. One word more, good lady. What shall I do? Not this, by no means, that I bid you do. Let the bloat king tempt you again to pet. Pinch wanton on your cheek, call you his mouse, and let him for a pair of richy kisses, or paddling in your neck with his damned fingers, make you to ravel all this matter out, but I essentially am not in madness, but mad in craft. Oh, sure. Of words he made of breath and breath of life, I have no life to breathe without said to me. I must to England. You know that. I, I forgot to so conclude on. There's letters sealed. And my two schoolfellows, who I will trust as I will, adders fanged. They bear the mandate. They must sweep my way and marshal me to knavery. Let it work. For to sell the sport to have the engineer hoist with his own petard. This man shall set me packing. I'll lug the guts into the neighbor room. Mother. Good night. Indeed, this counselor is now most still, most secret and most grave, who was in life a foolish, praying name. Come, sir. To draw toward an end with you. Good night, mother.